Wait, I wasn't ready. <laughs> you have no choice now. Rejoice, everyone. We're back with another Seki Reacts to Fate. This week it is Gaius Julius Caesar. Pain. This week it is pain. Now, Seki has actually seen his design, so I'm not... Not know. really. So, I've seen his design in, like, a JPEG this big on a screen. I didn't okay. actually click into it ever. I've never actually clicked in and looked at his artwork. All right. Well, just a quick um, just a quick thing, a note here. If you couldn't tell, this month's theme is supposed to be Shakespeare, but and this is the closest we can get to a second Shakespeare servant. So... You're telling me we don't have Macbeth and Othello and the Shrew? Not really. King Henry? Nope. Technically, you could have done Cleopatra. I could have, but it was better to do Julius Caesar first. Did he do a Cleopatra? Anthony and Cleopatra. Oh. Who was the play? All right, well. Uh, I know my Shakespeare. I know my ancient history Shakespeare. I almost looked up Julius Caesar Shakespeare. <laughs> Put the entire script of the play on screen. So, are you ready to see Julius Caesar? So, yeah, obviously Julius Caesar here is a thick boy. Uh, look, I understand that fate's not always on, like, historical accuracy, but Julius Caesar was a soldier and a general, first and foremost. And he was. He was a feared man. And he this, was. No, this is a joke. This is a fucking joke. And I know there's a joke reason for why he's so fat, because it's fate. Like, this is a fucking joke. Look at Seki being mean to fat people. My dude, if you were a fucking general of Rome who marched with your soldiers all over the goddamn Eurasian subcontinent, would you fucking be fat? No. I don't know what you're hesitating for. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where to best start here for my notes. I didn't quite expect that reaction in full. Well, look, it's just, I know a lot about Caesar, right? Like, I had to translate his Gallic conquests. Like, I have read extensively about Cleopatra and Caesar and Cleopatra and Anthony and Julius Caesar and all this other stuff he did. Um, and he's an interesting figure. Like, I love him. He's such an interesting figure historically because he's just this military and political powerhouse, right? Like, so many people have written about, um, so many people have written about, for example, him and Cleopatra, right? And a lot of people take the, take the tune of, like, oh, Cleopatra was so beautiful and he fell in love with her at first sight, but no. From what we know historically, from actual records and portraits we have of Cleopatra, Cleopatra was not a beautiful woman. At the most, she was a handsome woman. It was her intellect that drew Julius Caesar and Mark Anthony in. It was her ability to command the people and be an influential political figure. She didn't want Julius Caesar because he was attractive, right? She wanted him because he was a political powerhouse who would support her rule. She knew that he was what she could use to get it over on her fucking brother, right? And Julius Caesar is such an interesting character. I mean, one time he was kidnapped by pirates and he was insulted by how, how low the bounty they demanded on his head was. Like, they were like, we're going to ask for this much for you. And he was like, I'm worth at least double that. And then he told them as he left, I'm going to come back and kill you all. And then they all laughed about it in his own accounts. And then he came back and killed them all. I have read this man's Gallic conquests in the original Latin. Like, he is such an amazing military a tactician and strategist. Look, I'm sorry. I just... I, I'm sure fate has a reason, but it kind of feels like they're just, like, making a joke about how, like, the Romans had really big meals and then, like, to vomit or making a joke about, like, him gobbling up most of, like, Europe in his greed to, like, conquer or something. Like, this is the man who had the balls to march his fucking troops over the Rhine. I don't know. I just don't know if I want to do a reaction with you being so vitriolic right off the bat. Because there's not much I can do to say at this point that, to make you like this character or try to get convince you of it. But the point is you're supposed to tell me about them. I didn't like Penthesilia, but I conceded to a few good things about her. I don't know. I'm... How did you think I was going to react? I 
didn't expect you to get so anal over uh, historical accuracy right off the bat. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, but I expect you to be able to take at least a little bit of a joke here. Well, I like, mean, is the joke that he's gobbling up the Roman Empire? Or something? No, the joke is that he fell out of shape. Like, later in his life, he fell out of shape. He was at one point very ma like very muscular, very warlike. We even have a joke design of what he would have looked like then. Like a second April Fool's art of him in his prime. See, I didn't think he was older though. He looks young. Look at all of his artwork. He looks like a 14-year-old. The joke is that after he became a politician, like fully immersed himself in the politics, he just stopped upkeeping his health. The joke is a politician joke. I don't really get that joke. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I don't. I, I'm sorry. I just don't see. I mean, I get that the joke is supposed to be that, like, he decided to, like, sit on his ass and do politics. But that's not really funny to me. Like, I'm, I, that doesn't make me giggle. I'm sorry. That just know. seems I'm derogatory just... towards politicians. Okay. Politicians are the one people you're allowed to be absolutely derogatory towards. Look, you were the last person on earth I expected to tell me that. I, 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 I'm a political science major, Seki. I do not have a high view of politicians. I think they're all good for nothings. That serve, they're, they're usefully fat and lazy people. They're useful at, be, at the best of times. Only at the best of times? Only at the best of times. Otherwise, they're an annoyance. I will control my vitriol. I admit that I reacted without letting you actually explain the history of the character. This is maybe a character that we should have talked about the history and the fate interpretation before we saw the art. I honestly didn't even do much research into his art this time because, I won't be honest here, I thought you saw him in the campaign. And I thought I didn't. you didn't have that big a deal with him. I didn't. Do I even own him in the campaign? Someone owns him and you guys fought him and had access to his character sheet thanks to an ability you brought along with you. I didn't have access to his character sheet. Vorn did. But you also looked through pretty much every servant you guys got just to see what people could do. Yeah, but I didn't look at him. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just at a loss here now. I, I, I don't know where to go from I here. I feel bad. Now I feel bad. I, <laughs> oh, I thought they were trying to make some stupid joke about, like, gobbling up all of Europe or something in his conquests. No, I, I'm getting ahead oh. of myself here, but even Cleopatra's horror, like, upon first time, the first time ever seeing Julius Caesar again, she's horrified at what happened to him. And, like, there's an entire sub-arc in FGO about trying to figure out a way to make servants lose weight because the throne of heroes considered his peak at his peak point of influence because otherwise he was a normal human. Okay, well, I'm not mad that... Okay, look, <laughs> I have nothing against fat fate servants, right? I, I actually don't. Like, I just... this This one seemed like... This was a bit of a stretch for me, I suppose, because you said Gaius Julius Caesar, and I immediately thought of, like, the Julius Caesar you think of with, like, Cleopatra. It's supposed to be a joke of the fat Roman emperor that sits on his throne eating grapes while the people suffer. See, I didn't get that, because Julius Caesar wasn't the fat Roman Empire emperor who sat on his throne while eating grapes and letting people suffer. But I haven't even got to some of the weirder <laughs> stuff with his servant's backstory. They're, unlike, unlike Shakespeare, there actually is stuff in, that fate claims about him that's... Uh, that's completely counter to history. Well, now I feel bad. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> I reacted so strongly and it probably wasn't deserved. <laughs> oh, let me, let me find a good spot here in my notes. I feel bad now. I jump to conclusions. Okay, I'll start oh, with... Oh, is that why he's wearing, like, a fucking tie? Yeah, he's not in, no. he's not in warrior garb. Yeah, he's wearing a skirt! Everyone in Rome wore a skirt! <laughs> okay, but if they're gonna put him in, like, a 17th century military jacket... He's wearing a suit! And he's a military uh, jacket because he's a military leader. He's a dictator. So, so he looks all, like, modern from the waist up and skirted from the waist down? How does that make sense? That's like Penthesilia in her necktie... And nothing else. Okay, but the Penthesilia thing was to make a different joke. 
Uh, Seki doesn't get political jokes. Okay, show me his art again. So, question. That's a breastplate, right? That's not yes. his. Okay, is there a reason why there's a heart on it? Um, I don't even know if that heart was intentional. It probably was. Oh, you know what? There actually is, and that was going to be the thing that makes him, that distinguishes him from uh, actual history, unless you're a big believer in in Greek, Greco-Roman mythology. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 is it because, um, is it because of the Aeneid? What's, what about the Aeneid? Oh, okay, so. Does the Aeneid claim that he is a descendant of Venus? Yes. Yes, that is so, the case in fate. So the point, so, the Aene I had to translate Virgil's Aeneid for Latin class. I took Latin in high school as a language. Latin, bitches. Anyways, I had to translate Virgil's Aeneid. And I love Virgil's Aeneid because it is political propaganda at his strongest and finest. Virgil literally wrote the story of Christ, but for the Roman people. So basically what the Aeneid is, is it takes Aeneas of Troy, right? Following the Trojan War when he's expelled from Troy. Aeneas is the father of all the Romans. So Aeneas travels all over the Mediterranean looking for a place to settle. He tries Carthage with Queen Dido. That doesn't work out. Bad things happen. That's why we don't like Carthage. And he finally settles in Rome. And Aeneas is the founder of Rome, basically. And Aeneas was a demigod, child of Aphrodite, which is why Venus, right? And then the, the story was supposed to go. So Augustus commissioned it. Uh, Julius Caesar's successor augustus commissioned it to glorify caesar because he was like caesar's adopted son and he wanted to glorify his own line that makes sense but yeah no fate does go with the venus route okay um, and actually that they use it to explain what and i'm sure this is what the aeneid did as well or what augustus did but it's it's used to explain why he was such a charismatic politician and why he was such a beloved general yeah, basically. I mean, obviously the Aeneid only tells the story of Aeneas, yeah. but it basically insinuates that all of his descendants are the descendants of Aphrodite, and not only that, they are the favored descendants of Aphrodite, or Venus, as she came to be known. The result of that, though, is in fate, he was an absolute womanizer, which I'm sure is true in history as well, knowing knowing how these things go. I mean, as, as, far, as, as far as historical figures go, I mean, he wasn't necessarily a womanizer per se, but he was definitely, like, a man who got around and could get just about anything. If we're looking more at womanizers in this period, Mark Anthony is, is a much stronger mm -hmm. womanizer, right? But Mark Anthony is also well-known historically for being one of the sluttiest people to have ever walked this earth. Um, and, you know, historians just gloss over that. But, like, there are actually excerpts from uh, Roman writers who commented on Mark Anthony and said that he used to wear his skirt so short that you could see the tip of his penis hanging out because he liked how his thighs m looked muscled so much that he would show them off because they were his best asset. And then you'll probably notice the giant fucking arm. Yeah. And that that's the difference between Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar in, in terms of like working with Cleopatra, right, historically. Cleopatra worked with Julius Caesar. Like, she saw Caesar as, like, on par with her. Like, her way to power. Like, her way to maintain control over Egypt. Mark Anthony was a boy toy with an army. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, no. That, the arm here is the result of that Venus thing as well, because he's divine. Okay, yeah. That makes the sense. The one part of his, uh, that the one part of him that's not unfit. That makes sense. Actually, if the entirety of him were like that, I imagine he'd be a giant Hulk of a man. Oh, he would be the Hulk. Um, but, yeah. Uh, otherwise, yes. He he and Cleopatra did fall in love. They did have a child. Caesarian. And um, Cleopatra killed her at the time ceremonial husband. Yep. Um, and, but C Caesar, uh, one of his biggest regrets when he's summoned as a servant mm -hmm. is that he never properly recognized Cleopatra as his queen and his son as his successor. Yeah, because that, that left later on, right, that left Caesarion in a really interesting place in history where Caesarion is the only like biological son of Julius Caesar, but Caesarion is also, while being named after Caesar, not publicly acknowledged as a son of Caesar and therefore Oct Octavian, who later became Augustus, right, had a, had a larger claim in Rome's public opinion. And let this be a uh, lesson to you all to always remember to get life insurance. Yeah. And put your wife and kids as the beneficiaries. Because unfortunately, right out, 
after he succeeded in like his political ambitions, as he was at the height of his power and declared himself dictator for life, that life turned out to not be as long as he became one of two people to ever be impaled in the Italian Senate. Yeah, um, I uh, there's a, there's a thing I really want to buy off uh, Etsy or Amazon, and it's a bust of Julius Caesar. Except when you turn it around, there's places to put your pencils in his back. Man, I wonder how many people caught my joke. I... Impaled in the Roman Senate. Impaled in an Italian Senate. Recently. In a Italian Senate Zoom meeting, yes. Do you know Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII? Yes. There was a realistic-looking hentai of her that was streamed onto the Italian Zoom meeting for about two minutes. The second person to ever be impaled in the Italian Senate. <laughs> <laughs> you realize this is why the world is gonna end, right? <laughs> like, like this is the reason. That we have not yet been saved as a people. This is the reason why we can't fix global warming. <laughs> the planet itself is rejecting human life. Because of this. I'd say we'll put a clip on screen, but we're not going to. We like having a channel. We're going to hell for that. <laughs> like, collectively, as a human race. <laughs> on to Julius Caesar's abilities. Oh my god. I can't even. I cannot even. That is... Wait. Oh, okay. That's just relations to people. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. This is his story summary. By the way, Julius Caesar is an ad advent, or, <laughs> adamant capitalist. He is multiple times throughout FGO trying to pull really awful business ideas or scams. Eh. <laughs> but yes, he's able to... So he's he's got a high sense of trickery and he's actually capable of summoning Roman soldiers to battle for him um let's see he has a unique skill where his orating abilities can serve as kind of a mental attack on somebody I could see that I mean look I would have been more surprised if he didn't have some abilities related to like his political know-how like like you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter like how you view Caesar you have to admit he was a, a political and military powerhouse of the ancient world. There's a reason why we still know who he is. Who the fuck talks about Polonius anymore? <laughs> who the fuck talks about the third member of the triumvirate between Ju between Caesar and... <laughs> he was part of a triumvirate! Can you remember the names of the other two? No. Pompey! Pompey was one of them. That's right. I don't remember I the third one. I haven't written Julius Caesar the play in a while. Yeah, but like, there's a reason why we still remember him and not Pompey and... Whoever Whatever the that fuck person's the name third was. One was. But yeah, you'll notice once again, going back to the idea that this is politician Caesar, not, not general Caesar. He's got nothing here in regards to combat. Yeah. Well, he's got tactics, charisma, and incitement. But you can be a tactical leader without being on the battlefield yourself. That's true. That's true. Um, so yeah. Also, I don't, I don't want to be like super militant and be like Julius Caesar was like the hottest thing to ever exist, right? Like, histor like historically, ancient times, like he wouldn't have been like a bodybuilder like we see now. We'll get around to his evil. I, no, but there. still, but still, I do want to clarify, like, he would have been in shape for a soldier of ancient Rome. Right? Like, that's not the same as in shape for someone now. Like, you have to think these people had to be in a shape that would allow them to do a lot of things and potentially work through, like, lesser amounts of food. So it's, it is possible he had, like, quite a bit of, like, meat on his bones or something like that. I just objected to the fact that he looked, like, fucking rotund. He looked like Santa Claus. Yeah. And that would not have been... Actually, there's a running joke in the Christmas events where people mistaken him for Santa Claus. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Is it because he's wearing the red jacket? Yes. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> um, so yeah, his NP is actually uh, Croquet Amours, an actual sword he owned, apparently. Oh. It's his prized sword, and as far as what it does, it allows for him to basically consecutive attack so long as he succeeds in-universe luck checks. Um, he's incapable... He's, in theory, capable of attacking multiple times before anyone can really re uh, respond, um, which can bring down even some of the strongest foes. He just doesn't like using it because, in actual history, despite it being a damn nice sword, he got it stuck in an enemy shield and lost it in the middle of battle, so using it embarrasses him. 
I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Also, I'd like to clarify, Roman soldiers were not necessarily masters of combat. Rome maintained military might by force and training, not individual skill. Like, Rome, Rome is not an amazing military power because Roman soldiers were, like, the best at sword fighting. They were an amazing military power because they figured out large-scale coordination and training much earlier than other places did. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, I'm sure you know you're a politics major. Well, I actually didn't know uh, the specifics of Roman military. Well, the, see, the, the Roman military is all about, like, mass combat with shields and spears and a short sword to supplement. Hmm. So the idea is that every member works together, right? So the people in the front hold the swords, uh, hold the shields, and they have their spears, and the people behind them also have their spears sticking forward. And as soon as you get to the point where you're touching the people in front of you, you drop your spear if you're in the front row, you pull out your sword, and you start stabbing through the holes in the shield wall at the people in front of you. So the people stabbing you are hitting the shield and you're just shanking people from behind. In my defense, in the modern age, war is considered a, like what happens when politics fail. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to move you over here. Oh, let's see if I can... Oh, here it is. So a very Christian looking sword. I was just gonna say, why doesn't he wield the sword with his god hand? Because then he can use the god hand to bitch slap someone. That's fair. He Valid. actually does have an arcade animation. Oh. Uh, that sword looks very Christian, by the way. Hmm. I, I sorry. A little bit just, ahead of the time. It's got I'm the sure. cross and I'm shit. I'm sure the idea is just medieval sword. Yeah. Which, Ornate to be fair, the, the Roman short so really quickly before we see this, the Roman short sword is actually very famous in terms of weaponry because the Roman short sword is basically one of the first metal swords to ever be mass produced for general warfare. Like, Roman short swords were not masterpieces of, like, iron technology, but... They were mass-produced relatively quickly. They served their purpose. That way, the, the, they were made so you could equip, you know, 2,000 people very fast with all having short swords that were, like, standard issue. So if one broke or got lost, you could just get a new one. No problem. You didn't have to worry about training different people with different swords that passed down from, like, their fathers or whatever. But it also did allow for soldiers who went home because Roman f soldiers were often farmers who took up um, either farmers who took up swords to make money or being a Roman soldier for a certain amount of years was a way for non-Roman citizens to gain Roman citizenship in the empire. And you could take the sword back with you and then that sword could become a family thing. And the swords didn't change much over the generations other than the quality getting a little better. So the shape was always the same, which meant the training was standardized. I have studied a lot about weaponry. <laughs> Clearly. skip to the NP instead of seeing this whole character introduction. Look, I don't, here's the thing, I don't mind the art and animation and him being overweight, especially now that I've seen that they have him, like, actually fighting as a saber. Like, I don't mind it so much. It was just a bit of a shock at the very beginning. <laughs> not, not understanding the context of the joke and just seeing, like, a fat Caesar that didn't... I mean, I, I kind of get it. You went in expecting the general Caesar. I went in expecting, to be honest, hot Caesar. Okay, I built him up. Look, I, I went in expecting hot oh, Caesar. God, that won't. Nutty. Just uh, Google it in another tab. It's oh, not going to. Shima drill. Shima drill muscular Caesar. I think I can spell muscular. That, yeah, you're good. Watch me spell Caesar. <laughs> you might want to move my face. Oh, oh you got to no. be shitting me. No, 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 
Oh god. Okay, there we go. Uh, oh, it I doesn't look like there's a zoomed in image. Okay, yeah. Alright, that... Th honestly... Not gonna lie, I, I would have said that that was somewhat inaccurate too, but okay. Mostly just because of the the wings. What the fuck? I assume that's something godlike. It's just to make it look cool. Yeah. This was not a final design they were planning to use. Yeah. This is just to make him look cool and look more warrior-like. That makes sense. That makes sense. I feel like I accidentally built up Julius Caesar in my head. Like, I didn't think he was going to be fat. Um, and that was a bit of a shock, to be honest. Especially because fate, the, the waifus are so attractive. And then... And we have our attractive men. And it's yeah. not like we don't have any uh, overweight waifus. Maybe not as overweight as Caesar is, but overweight. Well, I haven't seen any of them yet, though. So this was a shock for me. I haven't <laughs> seen a, I haven't seen an incredibly like. I can only think not of one or conventionally. Two off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen a not conventionally. Being anime fair, attractive. I can't think of another conventionally anime attractive male or non-anime attractive male in fate either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I was a little. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Somebody's done fan art of him not being fat. Where? Where? Mid, right below, right, left, no, down, left, up, left, middle, left, left, left. Oh. Oh, that's cool. I can do it. I'm interested. I don't know who this artist is. Uh, okay. Right. It's uh, uh, by Blossom. Blossoms on Donboru. Blossoms on Donboru. Nice. Shout yeah, out to Yeah, that Blossoms actually looks really good. On, okay. This that is probably was what, what he actually expecting. more or less looked like dinner. <laughs> That's what I was expecting, to this be honest. This would probably be General Caesar. Yeah, okay. Like, that's 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 not just making a fan service Caesar up here. Yeah, okay, that's... But you know, you know, we have to appreciate one thing about both of them. What? Thigh! Skirt! Thigh. Look They're... at that thigh. Look at that thigh. Look how much of the thigh you... Mm. Mm. <laughs> thigh! Speaking of the, uh, the, 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 the Italian Senate impaling. Oh, God. <laughs> You know, I worry about humanity on a fairly regular basis, and this is not helping. Like, <laughs> this is not helping. <laughs> no. I think, you have anything extra you'd like to say before we go ahead and sign off? I Look, I like all the reasoning, right? I understand that they're taking this from the more political perspective, which is honestly a great way to take it because it, it would have been the easy way out to do a really attractive Caesar and have him just be a really good saber or something like that. Um, so I did like that we didn't just get like run-of-the-mill attractive saber Caesar. You could have maybe warned me to, to check the... Look, I thought you had seen his design already. <laughs> so how could I have warned you and I thought you were already well aware? No. No, I was not aware. Like, I always write little, like, things I might want to bring up in the video. I didn't even make a single note about how, like, whether or not to ask you how shocked well, you were about Caesar. Well, right, because think, think of it this way, right? I've never played with Caesar, so I haven't opened his sheet on my own, right? Not that I remember. Like, mm -hmm. genu genuinely not that I remember. So I've only seen him the size of my thumbnail on my computer screen briefly, because remember, we won that fight super fast. Yeah. He was down in like four rounds. So he was only on screen for 10, 20 minutes max, the size of my thumbnail. I just didn't, I, I genuinely didn't notice. I, I honestly, I just saw like red and a guy. Fair enough. Fair I, enough. Yeah. I, so I was, I was expecting something different and I was unpleasantly surprised. Also being for the last one. Last, or at least our last video, which for us wasn't that long ago, for you guys a fair while ago, probably. I did laugh. I was like, oh, our next. You're like, it's nice to see someone very historic there. I was like, oh, we're seeing Caesar next. And here I was thinking, like, hot Caesar. I mean, you don't find that hot. <laughs> Look, people can have their personal preferences. That, not my cup of tea. There's a part in FGO where they pull and he tries to fit into a teacup. No. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, sorry if this is a little bit of a weird episode. You and I didn't expect that going in. I don't think Seki expected me to be as I, I think, the way I did. Yeah, th this is. I don't think you were expecting me to be quite so knowledgeable as well. I don't think you were expecting me to go quite so hard. I didn't hard. expect you to fan, like, fangore about how Caesar should be nearly as hard. 
Look. Like if they if if Ku was um was a part of the plus size community. Yeah. I could tell going into it you would have an issue. I don't know. Look, put it this way, right? Um I am a simp. Part of the reason I like Ku from the beginning was A, he was in the first fate I watched. B, I saw him sooner than Gilgamesh. Um, and C, he was attractive. And it, once he once he was attractive, I also knew Ku Cullen, right? If he had just been unattractive, I would have been like, oh, that's Ku Cullen, cool. I am, a, I am a simple person at heart, right? Like, obviously I'm going to like a lot of the more attractive characters more. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't expect you to care for his design <laughs> spectacularly, right? I just didn't expect the vitriolic reaction. Look, part of it is that, obviously, as you guys could tell, I really like Julius Caesar, the historical figure. Like, he has his flaws, obviously. He was knifed in the Senate by so many people. Also, one of the earliest examples of not everybody contributing to a group project. There were 27 stab wounds and 45 people who said they were going to stab him or something like that. There's, like, an actual discrepancy between And you have to imagine, not everyone stabbed him only once. Exactly. So, like, some people did not do their part of the group project. Just, just saying. Uh, but, um, obviously I, I like him a lot, and I, I've studied him quite extensively because I had to translate his conquests for an entire year of my life, which meant that I was constantly hearing about him. So, I knew a lot more about him than the normal character. Does Faith actually cover his funny pirate story? There actually might be a reference of it somewhere in one of the chapters, like, in one of the, like, a gag event or something, mm -hmm. but I've, I... It's not listed here on the wiki, and I don't know off the top of my head. He's in a lot of, like, gag events just because they really like to play up the fact that he wants to make money and that he's him. Look, if any of you commenters knows if they even bring up the pirate anecdote, that would be cool if you could let us know. That seems like something that they either did bring up or would bring up eventually. Yeah. Because they do bring up that he was a writer, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not a great writer, to no, be honest. No, but he joins the writer's room he along does. with Shakespeare and Hans Christian Andersen, so... He does, yeah. So, uh, I, I apologize for my somewhat unprepared and vitriolic response to one of my favorite historical figures. Um, I apologize for the vitriol, but not for the content. <laughs> we'll see you next time, and hopefully Seki and I don't kill each other by then.